Hi, my name is Steven Sindoni. Welcome to another edition of He Walked the Americas. The stories in this series are from a book written by author L. Taylor Hansen. Our story today is entitled The Bowstring of Power. And here is where our story begins. As the Lord of Wind and Water quotes a codal, the quiet healer found himself the most powerful ruler on the entire face of the planet. For if great Rome had clashed with Tula in that day when the star of each was brightest, mighty Rome would have met her master. No guess is this, but based on a Toltec secret, a certain means of hardening copper beyond the strength of white man's steel, a secret which perished with the Toltecs and now lives only in tradition, that limbo of things long forgotten. To the master came the bowstring of power. It was unmasked and embarrassingly unexpected. His least wish was anticipated. His word was law, his desires unquestioned. He set about choosing twelve disciples, as he had done with each previous nation. From among them, he would leave a leader who would carry on his office after the prophet had departed. He had a small pyramid uncovered where along the olden stairway were the sinuous bodies of giant serpents. These he knew were the symbols of water, so he ordered their scales refinished with emerald, shining iridescent among the gold work in the sunlight. On their unlifted heads he placed plumes of gold and silver, of metal so fine, spun they seemed not to be metal, but truly the wind clouds over the oceans. This temple he dedicated to the one God, whom he called the Great Spirit, the Mighty One, who has no image. Then he changed the Toltec temples, removed with the idols, gone the sacrifices, finished with the rooms with lovely mosaics, each room in the color of its own direction. South was finished in silver and living pearl, with scrolls of paradise feathers, while the rooms of the West, symbolizing the sunset ocean, was done in shades of turquoise and emerald, with feather scrolls from Ziatol and other birds of bluish iridescence. For him they abandoned slavery, and they also changed their dances, so that the anciently honored rituals became instead rich living prayers, moving in song and color. For five days the ceremonies lasted, as they had in times long vanished. Only now the people were happy, gone with the horrors of war, slavery, hatred, and bloody sacrifices, and the people felt like singing. He organized great choruses of singers which chanted from mountain to mountain, accompanied by orchestras of musicians. He brought in long wood and metal marimbas, pans, pipes, made into four-man organs, and harps and flutes from other nations with instructors in the art of playing them, while drums of many types and sizes made up the percussion section, together with conch shells, rattles, and other instruments of depth and sweetness, liquefying the air with music. A tale is told of how a captain returning to Tula with his successful army found instead of the usual welcome and the sacrifice of the chained captives a peculiar disinterest in war and fighting. The captives were returned home with presents. Even the temples were strangely different. Disgruntled, he gathered his men about him and murmured so loud at these conditions that during the evening came a summons. The captain was escorted to the temple. There in the silence of the torches stood a number of white-robed figures, one of whom came forward toward him. No longer did the very walls reek of horror, but were exquisite with color and a perfumed scent of cedar. And there among them, alone save for his distant disciples, waited the healer. The captain stopped and stared about him. He was no prisoner being brought to trial as indeed his men had hinted. These men were unarmed. In fact, only he as was due his profession, carried a short sword, sharp as a razor, and only he had shield and helmet. Yet there was something about this person, this foreign usurping stranger who had hypnotized the Toltecs, this man they called the Feathered Serpent, lord over wind and water, which protected him far more than weapons. The captain stopped in strange confusion, and so well had he practiced his speech, so loudly had his men cheered him, his speech of anger held all his convictions, and now the words were gone, vanished like the winter snow upon the mesas. There is no need for you to tell me, he heard a soft, rich voice saying, I know your thoughts, and you have your point. You fear for your country, yet you are mistaken. You are trying to bind the infant so that it will always fit the cradle. Your enemy is not those harassed wild tribes. Your enemy is the law of the jungle. 
Convert these people and make them happy. Then there will be no need of your army. The captain thought bitterly of the future. With this dreamer in the temple, where would his country end? The prophet answered in a strange language. His disciples, who had been listening at a respectful distance, stared at one another. In memory, young Makoa, I am in a tangled jungle where a little boy was clawed by a tiger. The jaw of the captain sagged in amazement, and he lifted his head and stared at the healer with eyes puzzled and unbelieving. Then again, Katzal spoke in Toltec. It is not this or that nation which matters. Tribes will change. They merge and mingle. To look through the eyes of the tribe is the small view. Yea, Tula will die, as will Ekbalam. Other great nations will grow and vanish, but their blood will go on living. You think I seek the bowstring of power? For what? Food? Fame? Carnal living? The first two I have never lacked. With the last I have no interest because it is not of my father. With the means of life I am the teacher. The ends belong to the Almighty. Slowly the captain kneeled to the marble, took off his helmet, unbuckled his short swords, and upon them laid his famed shield, whispering in a husky voice, and awestruck, Forgive a mind which has been blinded. Forgive me, O Tio Wakan. This legend was told to the author L. Taylor Hansen by several Indians with an interpreter at the site of the ruins of Teotihuacan. Did Jesus walk in the Americas? All Mexican legends say that he did. I'd like to thank everyone for watching The Bowstring of Power.